Hey guys, God bless you. How are you? Um, so yet another video on this. Um, a friend of mine sent me a, a video to watch, a link, and um, I was listening to it and I was just blown away by another connection that I never saw. Um, so I, what it did is it just sparked me a little bit to um, to, to continue and, and tie some more things into this study. Um, I, I think this, this study is, is absolutely... Um, it's exhausting, really. Not exhausting, but it's it, it could go so deep. I, I could work on this for for months and not do anything else, not have a job. Not have, you know, well, my life is is really doing this. But I mean, I do work. But uh, you know, I'm just so surprised at how deep this and how massive this is, and what this has come to. Uh, and 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 believe me, there's there's things I've left out that I could talk about. Um, I hadn't even talked about Elijah in his in his ministry. Um, you know, or, or I don't know. But anyway, this is just uh, going into another um, another area, okay? And this is going to be called the Sons of Thunder. And um, a friend of mine told me this, the Sons of Thunder, and I, was, I kind of blew it off. I was like, yeah, James and John were called the Sons of Thunder. I never really noticed, never really paid attention to it. But then I saw this video, and I was like, this fits. This fits right in. Like, it fits perfectly. So is there a connection between John and James, Moses and Elijah, and the two cherubim? And we, we can go on to Zerubbabel, we can go on to Joshua, the rebuilding of the temple. I mean, you've seen what this has become. So if you've watched all these videos, I'm sure you're just like, oh my gosh. Um, anyway, is there a connection? And I, I, it sure seems to be. And I'm amazed to say the least how the Lord just keeps showing more and more and, and more. And it's like I can't keep up or really wrap my head around the whole thing. Um, but I do pray that this blesses you as it blessed me. And, and it's going to open a door for a lot of different things. And, you know, all I can tell you is pray over it. That's all I can say. You know, um, I'm confident with what the Lord has shown me. And I pray that you will pray over it. And not just take my word for it, but study yourself and and see where it takes you. If you if you're interested, obviously. So anyway, okay. So in uh, Mark three seventeen, we hear James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, um, surnamed Boanerges, 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 Boaner, whatever that word is. We're gonna just leave it as that, and which is the sons of thunder. So, what does this mean? What, how can this mean anything really special? What is this really talking about? I want to also say that some say that James and John were twin brothers, although I haven't found much really to support that yet, but uh, I'll just throw that out there, that there is word that they were um, twin brothers. So let's look at this word, and um, I use this group called... Um, Abraham Productions for 90% of my word studies. I'm just going to throw it up here real quick what they look like. This is their uh, website here, Abraham Productions. This is who I use mostly. They break it down completely, 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 completely. The feminine, the, the masculine, adjectives, uh, nouns, pronouns, I mean, all this stuff. And just, this is a short one. Uh, this is just James right here. But, I mean, I've seen pages upon pages for just one name different meanings um, but it's a great site that's what I used and I just wanted to show you that real quick for uh, uh, where I got these clips from and most of the clips that you've seen before um, so when you look at you know that uh, Bonerges, Bonerges, uh it occurs only once in the Bible it's only mentioned where where we just talked about this verse right here the sons of thunder um, and it explains uh, uh, that the word thunder, the state of one struck with thunder, astonishment, okay? Uh, key word is astonishment. We'll talk about that there in a little bit. But uh, it kind of goes on, and what they'll do is they'll find, they find all these different little, you know, meanings and different, you know, Latins and, and Greeks and everything else. But I just want to go over this real quick. I, said, I thought this was real interesting. The second part looks like it has to do with the word energy, all right? Uh, hence the word energy, Latin, energia. Obviously, the name is a compound, so sure enough, the word, all kinds of different compounds, meaning essentially weariness of the body, mind, 
lack of energy resulting from fatigue. And I, I know my friend will, will find this really interesting because he's always exhausted. But anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. But it goes on. And I want to cut up here real quick too. This also means a bellowing like a like an ox. And and that's the first part we saw right here. Uh, to act like oxen. They act like oxen. And uh, to cry out, shout, cry. Meaning both to shout and cry. Um, uh, ox or bull. Uh, the Greek word for ox or bull. Uh, ergo. And it goes on, the sound a cow makes. Okay. So that's interesting for a couple different reasons. Okay. And the first reason is it really struck a chord with me because it brought to remembrance something that I had looked at. And I totally forgot about it. But when we go back to this verse in Ezekiel 10, it's talking about the faces of the cherubim. Okay. And it says, and as for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. And then every one had four faces. And we talked about these four faces. The ox, the lion, the eagle, and the man. And here it says, and I had to read this a couple of times. I'm like, what am I reading here? Okay, so the first face was that of a cherub. The second face was the man. Third face is of a lion and the eagle. And I was like, well, where's the ox? The ox one's missing. And I go back up here and I'm like, the face of a cherub is here instead of ox. So in a sense, what this verse is saying is the face of the ox is the face of a cherub. And I was like, well, what in the world does this mean? So then, because as, as we know in Revelation, it, it has ox, lion, man, eagle, four faces. Um, here's just a quick picture of this, um, these four faces. And there's, there's different ones here, you know. Um, Kind of, kind of goofy, not goofy, I guess, but, you know, you got different faces and whatnot. Now, the Holy Spirit just hit me with something as I was speaking this that I didn't put in the study. And I just want you to think about that Satan, who is a fallen cherub, is talked about in all these contexts. And all of them except for this one, I believe, the eagle, Okay. Now let me, since I'm just discovering this here, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bewildered here. Um, he seeks about on the earth as a roaring lion for whom he may devour. Okay, um, he will be laid out like a man for all the nations to behold. Okay, and um, also Taurus the bull, the bulls of Bashan. Whoops, how the bulls of Bashan have compassed me about. So he just, the Holy Spirit just told me, Real quick, this. So let, let's just explore this real quick before we go on. Okay, so here's our first reference. This is Isaiah 14. Okay. Oh, how you have fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Fallen to the ground, you weaken the nations. Okay. You have said these things. I will, I will, I will, I will. And then it goes on. He says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and shall consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms? That made the world a wilderness and destroys the cities thereof. Okay, 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. So now we have man and we have lion. You see where I'm going with this? Let's keep going. Okay, this is Obadiah 1. And you get the flavor for this. We have heard a rumor from the Lord that and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise, let us come against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small and women heathen, thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived you. You dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. And say in your heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? We just saw Satan. Oh, how you have fallen, O son of the morning, or the dawn, whatever. I can't I have in front of me. Oh, how you've been cut to the ground. Right here. Who shall bring me down to the ground? You exalt yourself as the eagle, and though thou set your nest among the stars. Who lives in outer space? Who is among the stars? Thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. Okay. This is another reference right here to Satan as an eagle. He have set himself as the eagle. Guys, I'm getting chills. Um. Anyway, bulls. The bull, the eagle, 
the lion, the man. Here's the bulls. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gape at me with their mouths as a raving and roaring lion. This is Jesus Christ on the cross talking about what he's seen. Um, and uh, you can take your time and look at this. Now, I got a confirmation for this because I was having a hard time wondering what is, is, is going on here. So we have the bull. Okay, now let's look at this. Check this out. So um, we have red bulls. All right, red bull gives you wings. Red Bull. Everyone knows the Red Bull commercial. Red Bull gives you wings. Who's the famous Red Bull? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Number 23. The famous for the Chicago Bulls. Okay. Um, this is all connected to when Michael stands up. The day of the Lord. Um, I wish I had the Bulls, Chicago Bulls emblem on here. Okay, come on, here we go. Red Bull, Red Bull gives you wings. Michael, Jordan, the man of flight. You see where this is going, guys? Wow, I didn't even I didn't even realize this. So we had the four faces. The one of the cherub was the bull. Um okay. So let's let's keep going. Um just a little taken back because I, I was wondering how that was connected. Now he just showed me. Okay, so Lightning is fire from heaven. Fire from heaven is lightning, and the lightning part is the damaging part. All visible lightning comes with an audible thunder, but not all audible thunder but comes with lightning. Okay, he kind of goes on. This guy, he doesn't connect the sons of thunder to um, James and John, essentially, as calling down fire. He calls it uh, satire, essentially. I disagree, okay? Um, and, I, and you make that call. Uh, as we keep going here, but um, so we have the Sons of Thunder. Um, we have that name. Uh, the only person to call down thunder and or fire from heaven was Elijah. However, we also know that Moses, with his staff, also uh, during the plagues had fire, hell fire come down. So he also did miracles as well. So this is, I think, this is kind of false in, in how it's worded, but uh, I, he directly called it down. Um, and you can look at the 50 men and the captain uh, coming to Elijah in the mountain. I believe it's in 2 Kings. I'm not sure what chapter. Chapter 5, maybe. Um, so it doesn't take much searching in the Bible to know that both Moses and Elijah are connected to lightning, thunder, and fire. Uh, this also has to do with angelic appearances and supernatural winds over in battle. And, and, of course, judgment at the end of the world. But all that's connected. All these things are connected. The supernatural fighting, the angelic appearances, all these things. And so, um, when the lamb opened one of the seals, I turned and saw, I heard the noise of thunder, and one of the beasts was saying, come and see. So when it spoke, it spoke in this noise of thunder, uh, and they wanted to be the sons of thunder. Now, God goes on to tell them, essentially, we'll, we'll get into that, I'll, I'll run, let's go on real quick, let's take a look. We'll come back to it in a little bit, I won't forget it, okay? Okay, so, um, so James and John... Are in Samaria okay and essentially they're trying to, to win the locals over for Jesus Christ and and Samarians have kind of refused him because uh, Jesus has set his his eyes towards uh, Jerusalem and they think the Samarians think well he's, he's you, can, you can draw your own conclusions um, some people think that um, Jesus had a set sight on is or Jerusalem's to go do what he had to go do there but it, in reality the payment was for everybody um, it's almost like um, they had like Jesus mission focus changed. And so James and John are like, uh, well, you want us to call down fire from heaven and consume them as Elias did. Um, so let, let's just read it real quick. So in, in sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village in the Sumerians, uh, to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face as though it was towards Jerusalem. Okay. And I think that's, um, you know, Jesus changing his focus. He changed gears. Um, and when the disciples, James and John, saw this, that they weren't receiving him, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? 
And what they didn't realize was Elias was doing this for God's glory, not as punishment, but it was a it was a time of cleansing. It was a time of, hey, either you're with me or you're against me type of thing. And it's going to be the same way at the end of days. Um, so anyway, he turned, Jesus turned and rebuked them and said, this is very, very interesting. You know not what manner of spirit you are of. What does that mean? In other words, if we were to say this in plain English, you do not know what kind of spirit you are. And I find that very, very interesting, considering the cherubim, considering uh, the faces of the cherubim. Jesus is telling them, you don't know what kind of spirit you are. What an odd thing to say. He could have said anything. He could have said, you have no idea what you're thinking. You have no idea what you're doing. You don't know what my plan is. You have no idea what these people's hearts are. But he says this. Why on earth would he say this? The Son of Man has come not to destroy men's lives. And this is exactly what Elijah did back in the, with the 50-50, uh, the 50 and the captain. He didn't come to destroy him, all right, but to save him. But they were going to destroy him, so he's like, you're going to go. Um, but to save them. And then they went to another village. I find this very, very interesting. So just keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Because he says something very similar here in... Uh, in 2 Kings about Elijah, uh, there came a man to meet us, and he said to us, Go, turn unto the king uh, that sent you, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, It is not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire Beelzebub, God of Ekron. He's talking about this guy, I think, on his bed. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but surely you will die. And then he said to him, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you? And told you these words. What kind of man? What kind of spirit? You see where I'm going with this? I hope so. Okay. okay this is just kind of backtracking a little bit. I apologize. Um, but essentially what James and John, the son of Bedi, came to him saying, Master, what would we that thou should do, uh, that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire? And he said to him, what, what should I do for you? And they, Jesus said to them, or I'm sorry, then they said to him, grant unto us that we may sit one on your left and one on your right. I'm sorry, I got that backwards, but one on the right hand and the other on the left in your glory. Okay. I find what's interesting is what God says next. Um, I, I didn't put it in here. I, I, I'm sorry, but, uh, let me slide it over here. And he said, uh, okay, you don't know what you're asking. First thing he says, you don't know what you're asking. Why would that, why would he say that? I would imagine the trials and the pain and everything that those two are going to now have based upon what they've just asked for. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of? What did Jesus drink of? He drank drink the wrath of God. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Fire. Fire. Tribulation, trials, pain. And they said to him, yes, we can. And Jesus said, you will indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And be, and with the baptism that I am baptized all you shall be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it's given for them who are prepared. And when the other ten heard it, they began to be displeased with James and John. I suppose there was jealousy there. I'm not sure. But uh, like, kind of like, who do you think you are type of thing. I don't know. But anyway, let's go on. This right and left is very significant. If you remember from the previous videos, it should ring very true to you. And again, he said, Therefore, hear the word of God. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, all the host of heaven, standing on his right and on his left. Hmm. Then we go back to the candlesticks. Behold, the candlesticks of gold with the bowl upon top, seven lamps, the seven spirits of God, the seven pipes uh, to the seven lamps, the two olive trees by it on the right and on the left. These are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing before God. 
It's a very interesting connection. Can we stand on your right and left? There's another passage here. The two anointed ones that stand before the whole Lord. Stand before, I'm sorry, is that stand by the Lord of all the earth? I thought this is an interesting passage right here that ties in with the witnesses. Because remember, guys, yes, there's two witnesses that Revelation 11 can't be clear. But if we go back and we do a homework and we research about Zerubbabel and Joshua, they had a team. They had a team with them that helped them. It wasn't just two witnesses. There was a group. And I believe that group is the 144. And I think the two witnesses are part of that 144. That's just my opinion. But um, it seems to me to, to fit, essentially. Uh, first thing in Acts here, but you shall receive power of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem, all of Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And this is God's marching orders to the disciples after he leaves. Essentially, the disciples are the picture of the two witnesses. Of course, you have James and John who said, hey, we want to be to your right and left, and the rest of them were kind of displeased. But uh, I think the rest of them essentially would be the 144. I'm guessing, okay, but that's just how it seems to fit anyway. Um, so they receive power. The witnesses have power. Uh, these are the two olive trees. Um, and the power is conditional. If any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So it's a conditional power, okay? It's not, these guys aren't here for destruction, okay? They're here to finalize God's plan for redemption uh, before the great destruction comes, before Satan is cast to the earth to, to destroy it, all right? Essentially to set it. Um, I think this right here is the the remnant the two witnesses their marching orders 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city finish the transgression make an end to sin make reconciliation for iniquity and bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint them the most holy if i were to say that the witnesses have a, a mission that that's it right here okay in closing i would say this and this is going to get kind of crazy, so just bear with me. And I'm glad the Lord showed me that stuff when he did, because it makes a lot more sense now. We have connections here that cannot be ignored. And explaining why they are connected is, is a very, even more different story. Um, we have shown that Moses and Elijah are indeed the two witnesses. I think that's evident by... Um, uh, chapter 4 uh, in Micah, I believe. And uh, I'll just go there real quick. Malachi chapter 4. I mean, it, it's pretty clear. And with all the branch, and you know, the beautiful references that we've had. Uh, remember the law of, of, remember the law and of the prophets. He's going to say, he says, I uh, remember Moses. Remember, I'll send you Elijah uh, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, so um, that's, that's pretty obvious that, that those two are the witnesses. And with everything else, I think we've shown that. Um, although there's a short chapter about these two in Revelation, uh, we learn much more about their ministries that they had and also the work uh, with the building of the, the second temple with Zerubbabel and Joshua, which I believe paint the picture of the work that will be done. Um, this shows us the rebuilding of God's people. Remember, the temple is the people. It's the body. Um, through the foundation of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. It's going to have to be turned down and rebuilt, okay? And it's going to have to have the foundation of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of truth, the cornerstone of, of everything. People will see how they were deceived on the day, uh, you know, on these cataclysmic events when these things happen. And, and uh, people will see, their, their eyes will be opened. God will open their eyes and they're going to be hungry for the truth. They're going to be wanting to know what happened. Is heaven real? Is God real? Are, are all these things really true? And I think that's the witness's mission statement, to build them from ground up, you know, just like we were built uh, from the ground up, showing us the truth. Some things will come quickly to some, and I think some will be harder to accept, you know, but also a lot's going to be happening on the earth, so it's going to be, in, you know, for lack of better words, in their face. Um, 
let's see. So um, they will learn truth completely and serve God with all of their hearts because they're no, they're going to know it's true. They're going to know at this point, you know, His redemption is true. His His will is is going to be in my life. Um, we know the enemy will come against the witnesses just as it did with Moses and Elijah, uh, also with Zerubbabel, um, and uh, and the, the disciples in general. Uh, the witnesses will have power against the enemies uh, that come against them and will not lay down their lives until the nations have repented and turned away from sin. At that point, I believe, um, and I'm going to post a link to another video that just really enlightened me, and I'll, I really encourage you to watch it. Um, at that point, they're gonna, their, their mission will be complete, and there will be nothing left to do except, uh, you know, everyone who, the harvest will be essentially done, and it will be time for the great wrath of God upon the earth. Um, we also see the two witnesses as cherubim. Okay, that's definitely evident. We did a whole video on that. That cannot be refuted. Um, I believe this. It, it's definitely connected to James and John. And, and so, how does all this mean? And this is where I come with my opinion. Okay, supported by many dreams, by many visions, and many teachings from many different people that I've watched and learned from. And um, you know, I'll just say D. Oliveri. Um, Jason from Prophets Among Us, uh, Petra, um, all these different people that have had these, and, and, and even John Cleck, although I don't completely see how he sees it, but you know that there is some sort of angelic group of people here, some somehow, and uh, you know, just a lot of different people that have had these, um, you know, dreams, visions, and teachings. Um, I'm going to make a careful statement that our eternal spirit can be used by God many different times. And, and that, and that might say like, well, that's reincarnation or incarnation. Uh, you call it what you want. Um, first off, it was the Roman Catholic church that took that word and said, you know, you will not use this in, in, you know, throughout the Bible and this and that, but there's evidence of it in the Bible. You know, there's evidence of it everywhere in the Bible. Um, and you know, We've talked about that in the previous videos. We walk around this planet in flesh. It's it's a suit for an eternal spirit. Um, it's no real surprise um, that Satan has cloned his seed. Okay, um, and that's evident in the wheat and the tares. He's he's taken flesh and manipulated flesh like beyond what we can really. Yeah, he's like a friend of mine told me one time Satan's like a mad scientist. And that's exactly what he is. He's a mad scientist. He takes our DNA and he stretches it and he changes it and he manipulates it into animals, into half human, half animal, pig. Uh, you name the combination, essentially. Or he'll find some sort of chemicals or some sort of technology to destroy it. I mean, it's been a constant battle with this guy who is messing with our flesh. But that's all he can mess with. That's all they can mess with is the flesh. Um, anyway, um, so Satan has cloned his seed. Um, would he have done this to counter God's move for the influx of the spirits of old? Think about that for a minute. That Jesus would send in the latter days? Does that make sense? Who do you think lives inside those clones? It's fallen ones. It's fallen angels. Okay. Do you think God has the same plan? I'll send this angel in the flesh to the earth. Yes, they will have to go through the same things of the flesh that everyone else does. But if they walk in the spirit and walk in me, then I will show them these things to teach, to, you know, or have dreams or whatever their gift is. It's something to consider. Definitely something to consider. Did the Lord do something similar? And I think that what I just explained is what he's done. Does Satan copy God? Of course he does. If, if God has a plan, Satan's going to copy it somehow. These are questions that you should take to the Lord. I know it's difficult to think about the possibility and to swallow some of this information, that some of us could be spirits of old. It's a pretty bold claim, and it, and it goes against everything that we were taught in Sunday school and church. Um, but remember what the Lord said to James and John. You know not matter what spirit you are. What a very odd thing to say. Something you should definitely key in on. Elijah and Moses will come before the day of the Lord. Do you think the disciples, James and John, 
may have thought that they were in the last days at the time when Jesus walked the earth and that the kingdom was going to be restored right there in their lifetime. I know that it was even asked by, by Peter or somebody, right? If so, do you think that they may have thought they were Moses and Elijah? And Jesus rebuked them and saying, you don't even know who you are. You need to just be quiet until I show you. And I believe, I believe he showed this guy. And I'll tell you why. Because, because the angel he's speaking to says this. This is John, Revelation 10.10. 10. Sorry, 10, 11. And he said unto me, You must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Mm -hmm. John got this revelation on the island of Patmos. He left that island, walked off the island, essentially. The king that put him there, or the Caesar that put him there, ended up dying. And he left. And he went to die to be an old man. He never did prophesy again to many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. I believe this is yet to be fulfilled. So, after that said, we know that John, I think, knew. I think John had a clue of what was going on. Now, I find the faces of cherubim much more interesting than before. And we notice that with Satan, how he was portrayed as the bull, the coming judge. Okay, or well, God's the judge, but the bull's going to be used. It's going to be the tool. Uh, the lion, the man, he had all of them. And when he's cast down to the ground like a man, I often wonder if God is going to make him put on flesh. I often wonder if God's going to make him put on flesh. I think that's a very interesting statement. And if he does... How awesome that will be to look down at him as a man. Anyway, um, we tied them to creation, uh, which I think is still, um, we talked about how Noah and the ark and the fowls of the air, the beasts of the earth, you know, all those things. Uh, we talked about creation before and how the animals reflected that. And I still think that's, that's, that's what he's talking about. But I think this, we just peeled back another layer. Um, You know, we, we talked about how we see the man, the eagle, the lion. Um, is this morphine? Is, is this morphine or phases of existence? I believe it could be phases of existence for the cherubim. I'm not sure. We know the bride's given wings of a great eagle. Okay, We know that man was created in God's likeness. We also know Satan's a devouring lion, which we talked about. Will the witnesses be as roaring lions speaking in truth? I'm not sure. But it's interesting. I find this very interesting too. Michael stands up on the day of the Lord. Revelation, I'm sorry, um, Revelation 12 and also Daniel 12. Could this be one of the witnesses who was slain? After finishing his phase as a witness for the Lord, he will now serve as the angel and cast Satan to earth for judgment? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I do find this whole standing up, interesting. After three days, they stand up and ascend into heaven. And then there was a great earthquake and darkness fell upon the land. Something to think about. And here's the witness statement. Seven weeks are determined upon thy people to finish thy transgression, to make an end of sin, reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy. I believe that's revelations. And to anoint the most holy. These are things to consider. I do not necessarily brace all of them um, of what I stated, but I did feel led about it. Um, these words must be prayed over and studied for yourself. Um, I'm going to continue to explore this topic and put forth anything new he shows me. Um, I will leave you with these words. Behold, I will do a new thing. And now it shall spring forth, shall you not know. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.